Okay, guys. So uh, today we are going to relay live the one part of the antibiotics that we are we are discussing. So the lecture today is going to be about penicillin. So let's start. First of all, the antibiotics mechanism of action. I do not have any disclosures. The categories that we will discuss about for the antibiotics are penicillin family. In that, we'll talk about penicillins and cephalosporins, anti-ribosomal antibiotics, for example, 50S binders and 30S binders, and of course, anti-TB, anti-leprosy, and then fluoroquinolones and other. The study plan is to take care of the penicillins first. Once we have done the penicillins, and we'll go to anti-ribosomals, anti-TB, anti-leprosy, and then to miscellaneous medications. So let's start. First of all, penicillins, why are these called beta-lectum antibiotics? So imagine that we have a person, her name is Celine Diane, 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 Celine Diane, and she is, she has a pen, she is made up of a pen, so it is penicillin. And imagine that she is asking for a ring, and you present her with a square ring. This square ring should help you remember that penicillins all have a squarish ring in them that is called beta beta lectum ring that is why these are also called beta lectum antibiotics now can the penicillins have more than one rings yes the other ring that you see over here in this picture on the right this ring is actually used to modify the penicillin itself to make it resistant to make it you know the scope to change the scope of activity so this is the ring where modifications or other molecules come in now what is the mechanism of action of penicillin look penicillin first thing that you should remember is it is penicillin a, a bacteriostatic medicine or bactericidal or bactericidal so bactericidal are those drugs that kill the pathogen. Bacteriostatic are those drugs that do not kill the pathogen. They just stop the growth or further reproduction of the pathogens. So penicillin itself is a bactericidal. So it would kill the, the pathogens. Now, what are the penicillin binding proteins? So this is the most important thing to take away. This is the most important thing to keep in mind. Penicillin binding proteins are any protein on the surface of the cell or inside the cell that allow penicillin to attach with them. There are hundreds of kinds of proteins that can allow the penicillins to attach with them. However, in the bacteria, a specific protein that is present inside the pathogen where penicillin can go and bind is called penicillin binding protein. And that particular protein is transpeptidases. So let's look at this, this uh, picture over here. If you see on the left side, from top to bottom, the blue cross hatch that you're seeing, that is the peptidoglycan cell wall of a gram-positive pathogen. Now this is important to keep in mind, this is gram-positive. On the right side is the gram-negative, and how do you see that? Do you see those porine channels? And I see in the live feed that the porine, the word porine, is under my picture. So please forgive me for that. The gram negative has porine channels through which penicillin would actually enter inside the cell. Now, if you see here, penicillin has to go all the way in the cell and connect with this little guy who seems all worried. Can you see that person? <laughs> so this is the transpeptidase enzyme. What is the function of this enzyme? transpeptidase builds he's a servant inside the bacteria and he builds the fence that goes outside the bacteria he's a fence builder he's a wall builder so transpeptidase's function is to create cross bonds or cross links to create these cell walls so think about it for a second if you disable the transpeptidase will the transpeptidase be able to make cell wall no if the bacteria need more cell wall, will it be able to make it? No, bacteria would have damage to the cell wall by normal wear and tear and finally it would die because of 
broken cell wall and the material would leak out and material from outside will leak in so transpeptidase is really important and that is what penicillin actually attacks it goes and binds with the transpeptidase so let's see how that happens so here check this out in this diagram it's the same diagram but do you see that tiny house-like structure that is a penicillin with two rings it goes all the way in and look at the transpeptidase he looks all upset because now he's holding on to the penicillin so penicillin has bonded has has bound with the transpeptidase now transpeptidase cannot do anything because now it is holding the the penicillin or penicillin is holding it so what would be the result of that result of that is going to be that the transpeptidase cannot work anymore to build fence and so there is no defense outside the pathogen and pathogen will die so that is a basic mechanism don't forget it what is the mechanism of action of penicillin penicillin goes into the pathogen binds with the transpeptidase makes it disabled transpeptidase cannot make the cell wall anymore and bacteria dies because of the ruptured cell wall now what are the requirements so if somebody comes to you and says okay tell me what are the things that are needed for penicillin to be effective number one penicillin has to have an intact beta lactam ring why this is important because bacteria have learned to break that ring and make penicillin ineffective so remember that they need that square ring number two they should be able to enter the cell if penicillin is standing outside the cell and cannot go in and connect with the penicillin binding protein or transpeptidases then penicillin is not going to be able to do anything so enter the cell have a beta lactam and bind with the transpeptidase now how does bacteria so bacteria says well i'm not going to just let you come in and kill my enzymes or bind with them give them hugs i am going to not let you come in i'm going to resist you so how does the penicillin how does the bacteria resist this thing so let's look at that so on the right side you're seeing here again under my picture you see the porine is pointed out so one way the bacteria this is only for gram negative gram positive cannot do this gram negative can alter the shape and structure of their porine channels that blocks the penicillin from entering and that way penicillin cannot enter and cannot disrupt the enzyme so that's the mechanism of resistance first type only in the gram negatives not in the gram positives second is more common to both negative and positive what they do is they make a new enzyme that enzyme is called beta lactamase lactamase whenever the word is whenever something ends with is that means it breaks it beta lactamase means an enzyme that can break beta lactam what is beta lactam beta lactam was the penicillin square ring so when the penicillin comes in the pathogen the beta lactamase of the pathogen breaks the beta lactam ring penicillin becomes useless so that's the second mechanism third mechanism is that the transpeptidase enzyme itself the enzyme that is a target of the penicillin that changes its shape so look at this little enzyme here it looks different from the enzyme that you saw before so when the enzyme shape is changed penicillin cannot recognize cannot find the enzyme to bind with it it cannot bind and of course then the enzyme can continue working and finally bacteria have developed pumps these are called efflux pumps and what they do is penicillin can go in and then the pump can throw it out right away so that is how the bacteria can resist penicillin so what are what is the recap what are what are the mechanisms of resistance of penicillin number one gram negative can alter their structure of porine channel number two beta lactamase enzyme is produced number three transpeptidase structure is changed 
and number four active pumps to throw pumps to throw the penicillins out cool so that is the live feed for today this lecture in its full length is also present on our site please make sure that you go there and check it out drbean.com over there click on the catalog in the catalog click on antibiotics and you will be able to find this lecture in its entire length so if you see here i've then discussed the penicillins and how to prescribe them and the usage and stuff like that so all that is available um, in the full-length lecture thank you very much